Hi friends, I'm going to read the next chapter, chapter 3, in Flat Stanley, His Original Adventure. Stanley the Kite Mr. Lambchop had always liked to take the boys out with him on Sunday afternoons to a museum or roller skating in the park, but it was difficult when they were crossing streets or moving about in crowds. Stanley and Arthur would often be jostled, that means shaken, from his side, and Mr. Lambchop worried about speeding taxis or that hurrying people might accidentally knock them down. It was easier after Stanley got flat. Mr. Lambchop discovered that he could roll Stanley up without hurting him at all. He would tie a piece of string around Stanley to keep him from unrolling and make a little loop in the string for himself. It was as simple as carrying a parcel, which is like a purse. And he could hold on to Arthur with the other hand. Stanley did not mind being carried because he had never much liked to walk. Arthur didn't like to walk either, but he had to. It made him mad. One Sunday afternoon in the street, they met Ralph Jones, an old college friend of Mr. Lambchop's. Well, George, I see you have bought some wallpaper, Mr. Jones said. Going to decorate your house, I suppose? Wallpaper? said Mr. Lambchop. Oh, no, this is my son, Stanley. He undid the string and Stanley unrolled. How do you do? Stanley said. Nice to meet you, <coughs> young feller, the old man said. George, he said to Mr. Lambchop. That boy is flat. <laughs> Smart, too, Mr. Lambchop said. Stanley is third from top in his class at school. Phooey, said Arthur. This is my younger son, Arthur, Mr. Lampchop said, and he will apologize for his rudeness. Arthur could only blush, that means his cheeks got red, and apologize. Mr. Lambchop rolled Stanley up again, and they set out for home. It rained quite hard while they were on the way. Stanley, of course, hardly got wet at all, just around the edges, but Arthur got soaked. Late that night, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop heard a noise out in the living room. They found Arthur lying on the floor near the bookcase. He had piled a great many volumes of the encyclopedia on top of himself. <laughs> Put some more on me, Arthur said. Don't just stand there, help me. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop sent him back to bed, but the next morning they spoke to Stanley. Arthur can't help being jealous, they said. Be nice to him, you're his big brother after all. The next Sunday, Stanley and Arthur went to the park by themselves. The day was sunny but windy, too, and many older boys were flying beautiful, enormous, that means really big, kites with long tails made in all the colors of the rainbow. Arthur sighed. Someday, he said. I will have a big kite, and I will win a kite flying contest and be famous like everyone else. Nobody knows who I am these days. Stanley remembered what his parents had said. He went to the boy whose kite was broken and borrowed a large spool. That means um, a spool is like a round up amount of string. Usually it's on something kind of like a toilet paper roll, but made out of plastic, and then it's a lot of string together. That's what a spool is. Stanley remembered what his parents had said. He went to a boy whose kite was broken and borrowed a large spool of string. You can fly me, Arthur, he said. Come on. He attached the string to himself and gave Arthur the spool to hold. 
he ran lightly across the grass sideways to get up to speed, and then he turned to meet the breeze. Up, 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 up went Stanley Bean, a kite. He knew just how to manage on the gusts of wind. He faced full into the wind if he wanted to rise and let it take him from behind when he wanted to when he wanted speed. He had only to turn his thin edge to the wind carefully a little at a time so that it did not hold him. And then he would slip gracefully down towards the earth again. Arthur let out all the string and Stanley soared high above the trees, a beautiful sight in his red shirt and blue trousers, which are pants, against the pale blue sky. Everyone in the park stood still to watch Stanley. Stanley swooped right and then left in long matched swoops. He held his arms by his sides and zoomed at the ground like a rocket and curved up again toward the sun. He side-slipped and circled and made figure eights and crosses and a star. Nobody has ever flown the way Stanley Lambchop flew that day. Probably no one ever will again. After a while, of course, people grew tired of watching and Arthur got tired of running about with the empty spool. Stanley went right on, though, showing off. Three boys came up to Arthur and invited him to join them for a hot dog and some soda pop. Arthur left the spool wedge in the fork of a tree. That's the part where a tree splits open and maybe has more than one trunk. He did not notice while he was eating the hot dog that the wind was blowing the string and tangling it about the tree. The string got shorter and shorter, but Stanley did not realize how low he was until leaves brushed his face and then it was too late. He got stuck in the branches 15 minutes past before Arthur and the other boys heard his cries and climbed up to set him free. Stanley would not speak to his brother that evening, and at bedtime, even though Arthur had apologized, he was still cross, which means upset. Alone with Mr. Lambchop in the living room, Mrs. Lambchop sighed and shook her head. You're at the office all day having fun, she said. You don't realize what I go through with the boys. They're very difficult. Kids are like that, Mr. Lambchop said. Phases. Be patient, dear. That's the end of chapter three. In the next video, I'll read chapter four, The Museum Thieves. See you later, friends.